First, I want to give a shout out to Alex Becker. I absolutely adore your Star Wars videos. Really. And, you know, this frustration everyone's having with Star Wars, I'm kind of sort of like secretly happy about it because as a rejected, unusual, kicked out of the system, disenfranchised, true, died in the wool, Bible Christian, I can't stand Sunday morning. The same thing that Star Wars fans are having happen with Star Wars, the frustration, the bureaucracy, the takeover, disenfranchisement, that has been happening with the real true Christians that almost nobody hears about for 10, 20 years. And it's been documented. There's a Christian book called Growing Up Fundamentalist. <clears throat> Pardon my French. We've been frustrated with Sunday morning for a long time. The non-Christian culture has been complaining and whining, rightly so, about so-called Christians, but those are all Sunday morning-ites. And we real people who really love Jesus, just love Jesus and wanted to study the Bible, we were dealing with the same frustration inside Sunday morning's bureaucracy as the Star Wars people are having dealing with Star Wars. So, welcome to the club. We get you. I get you. And there are millions of us. George Barna has documented there are millions of Christians that are as frustrated, more frustrated with Sunday morning than the non-Christians are frustrated with the pop culture perception of what Christians really are. So what's going on with Star Wars? My prediction, George Lucas could come back. I'm, I'm, I don't know what Lucas will do. Lucas has always kept his plans a mystery, even from his own actors. He's gotten criticism over this, and I, I, I'm not so sure I'd say that George Lucas is such a bad guy, although banning Darth Vader's original actor from events is kind of mean. I'd, I'd hope that there would be a way that he could become welcome back into the group and stuff, but I, I don't want to get into the, the, the froggy details of all of that. I believe there's a good chance Lucas could come back. Now let's go to Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. This explains exactly what's happening. In his book, he investigates public companies that were in like this, he called it, it's like a box, he says, and they couldn't figure out how to grow. And they figure out how to grow and they grow. And he makes all these counterintuitive observations. Leaders don't have to be charismatic and all that jazz. But as he explains, in his book, he was not able to investigate normal, privately owned, founder is still there with the company type of companies. They were all publicly traded companies and the people leading them and running them were not the original people that created the company, by and large, for the most part. He wasn't able to look at private startups because they don't have publicly available records. So he had to look at the public records of publicly traded companies for his research. You might be able to look at one or two private companies, but not enough in order to collect a lot of data and analyze. And that's what Jim Collins wanted to do. Okay. So Jim Collins book, Good to Great, it's not a study about any company, any entrepreneur, any business being somewhat okay and then figuring out the breakthrough to become awesome. It's a book about companies that have been taken over by the public or by a board or by a bureaucracy like Disney buying Star Wars, Lucasfilm. These companies take over a company someone else made and they've got to figure out how to grow. And one of the ways to do it is get all the right people on the bus and then figure out where the bus is going. In other words, Throw away all your original customers, throw away your original employees, throw away the original visionaries. Here we've got a building, it's got a payroll department, it's got a bunch of stuff that's been purchased, computers, office supply, paper, that sort of stuff. It's got a bank account with money in it. It's got a bunch of people who know a name. Uh, the name could totally change to mean something completely different. We can go from making cars to making pencils, but it's a name that people know. So we've got these resources. And let's figure out how we can completely abandon the original mission, 
get new people here to take over the resources of this dead old organization, what's left of it, and we'll completely change it into something absolutely, totally new and unrecognizable so that we can take these resources and move forward. Now, that's an ugly way of saying it, but that's basically what Jim Collins is observing in his book. Look, and tell me I'm wrong, not criticizing Jim Collins. Uh, there's a lot of poor disenfranchised companies who have a lot of dead founders leftovers to take over and figure out how to work with. I mean, it's a very useful book for a lot of people, but once the founder's gone, it's over. So Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, could be happening. It, it's trying to happen, kind of, and it's not succeeding. It's one of the fail stories at the moment concerning Star Wars. But if Star Wars is able to successfully pull off a good to great, it's going to be because they got all the wrong original people off the bus, including the customers and viewers and the fans. I mean, it has to be that way. And then they got the right people on the bus, totally took it over, and it became something totally new, and then it became a successful, profitable sort of deal. If that works, they're going to have to abandon the fans. But... If Star Wars is going to stay true to the fans and they're not going to get off the bus, they're going to have to get the original bus driver, George Lucas, back on the bus. Now, this happened with Snapple. These two guys started Snapple and they sold it and the guys who bought it didn't know how to run it. Well, duh, that's what Jim Collins wrote a book about. You people don't know how to run someone else's company. So they would buy it back at a discount and profit off of the deal. Now, Disney's... Stupid, but not always. I mean, you know, it depends. Disney's not going to want to sell Lucasfilm back to George Lucas at a discount. But if Lucas is smart, he'll be able to buy the company back and profit from it. And Disney, uh, they might have a marginal profit, but it wouldn't have been worth it. Disney's going to get hurt from this in the long run. If nothing else, Disney is going to have to good to great, as a, using it as a verb there, they're going to have to good to greatify this Star Wars thing and boot all the original fans. <coughs> Pardon my French. No, I, I just had this summer Red Bull, which I'd like to... I'll look at that. The, the summer Red Bull's green. So, I... I <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's been chromatized. Kind of a nice illustration about what happens when a company takes over something someone else created. Mm. But no, that's my summer Red Bull, if you could see it. Want to see the Chinese? It's good. No, can't see the Chinese on it. Kind of see the Chinese. It's possible Lucas could come back. If he does, my hat would be off to him, and then you could see my semi-balding head. I have a theory as to why people go bald, by the way, but uh, I think we'll get into that in another story. You heard it here first.